Welcome back, Real Pastors YouTube channel. It's good to be back. It's yeah. been a while for me. Yeah, been a while for Gary. I told everyone he will be back. And today is a very special day. Yes. And, the uh, two of us are back on Tuesday. Yes. Oh, even better. On Tuesday, yeah. on what we are deeming sequel day. No, sequel day, number two movies in a franchise. These are yes. the second movie in a franchise. Our favorites, ones we deem possibly the greatest of the second movies. We're yes. not talking third, fourth. We're not talking Fast and the Furious 19 here. We're talking number yeah. two. Number two. And this is great because the two of us are back on a Tuesday on 2 22. This is yeah. why it is sequel day, ladies and gentlemen. And if you didn't realize, this has gone live at 2 22 because we might as well just keep it rolling. Yeah. And 22. with a great idea from Gary's wife. It was. I didn't think yeah. that. Yeah. She said, Y'all should go, y'all should do it at 2 22. And I was like, Oh, that's a good idea. <clears throat> yeah. So here we are again talking about. The second one, as Gary said, the second movie of whatever franchise. Not We understand there are sequels, thirds, fourths, whatever. No, it is the second movie okay. of a franchise. That's what it has to be. Those are the rules. And uh, we have five each for you of what our favorites are. And then we have some honorable mentions. And uh, we will talk well, to them. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, you know, Gary's got like 20 of them. That's just how he is. I kept it to two. <laughs> he did. He did. And so, uh, yeah, so since you guys have heard enough of me recently, since Gary, you know, was out of town, had other things, I think it's only right that Gary goes first so you guys can hear his wonderful voice once again and his thoughts. Wow. I'm so honored. Yes. Okay. So here we go. So we're going to have Gary's top five sequels. Okay. And uh, I, and I don't know, Gary, sorry, I didn't put this in any specific order. So you're just going to have to say what they are and I'll get your uh, pictures up there. All right. So I'm going to say what they are little brief of why of mm -hmm. each one yep that makes sense okay first i'm going indiana jones and the temple of doom i love this movie fun fact this is the first indiana jones movie i saw oh. i bought it at a flea market on vhs and put it in there and uh, it terrified me as a kid freaked me out but i loved it um mm -hmm. people have a love-hate relationship with this movie um i really much enjoy it and uh, Indy on the bridge with the sword, you mm -hmm. know, uh, great. I had to put it on this list. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Is it a pre is it's kind of a prequel because it does take place before Raiders of the Lost Ark, but it is the second. So Indiana, mm -hmm. Jones, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Uh, second or next, fourth, I don't know. <laughs> I have what I had to put on this list or my younger brother would – have some words for me next time I saw him. And that is The Godfather Part 2. How do you follow up an epic masterpiece of a movie? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you make a second one that is, if not better, just as epic, just as good. This movie mm -hmm. is incredible if you're into the mafia type movies. And what I like about The Godfather movies, didn't care for the third one as much because it's just it falls a little flat compared to the first two. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is a mafia movie, but it's not saturated in the gangster language, thick cussing content like the movies we get today. Mm -hmm. uh, is it violent at times? Yes. Is it a rough story? Yes. Is it about crime? Yes. But it is about a man being pulled into a life of crime when he is trying to resist it at the same time. Godfather mm -hmm. Part Two is one of the greatest sequels of all time, and I had to have it on my list. So, Scott, if you're watching, there you go. <laughs> Uh, good, good. Number three, I'm going Aliens. Mm -hmm. My favorite, probably my favorite action movie of all time. Not only is it a great sci-fi movie, it is a, uh, yep, there it is. That's, I got that poster back there somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but uh, this is a great action movie. This is a war movie. It says right there, this time it's war. James Cameron follows up really Scott's classic masterpiece of a sci-fi movie with just a out of this world, literally, um, movie that is fun. It is intense. It is scary. Um, and I love revisiting this movie several times a year. There was another James Cameron sci-fi that I was trying to decide between this one and that one. You'll see that on my honorable mentions list, but I had to go aliens. Mm -hmm. um, it's got some language in it, so be advised, but it is a great war mm -hmm. action movie. And, that, and let's just go ahead and put this out there. Probably the franchise should have just finished right there. Oh, indeed. I mean, it just should have just been two and been done with it. 
You don't come at me with Alien 3. That trash. <laughs> no. Trash. Or Alien Resurrection. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Aliens, boom. Leave it at that. Love Leave that movie. That. I don't even watch it tonight. Such yeah. a great movie. Um, and number two, uh, I'm going Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. Mm-hmm. Um, some might say, well, isn't that actually episode blah, blah, Well, this is the second movie. No. Second Star Wars movie we got. Um, the Empire Strikes Back is – this is where – and I understand people wanting a new hope to be their favorite. I know you're a return of the Jedi guy and mm-hmm. I respect that, but this is where star Wars goes from. We're just not, we're not just a little space opera, nice fun movie. This is where it's like, all right, we are a franchise. We are to be taken seriously. And this movie has so many epic moments with Han Solo and Luke and the, you know, the big reveal of, mm-hmm. you "Oh, know, I am your father arm hand cut off all of that great movie um boba fett is introduced in this movie yep um and uh i love Empire, i love the empire strikes back yeah. and for those who may argue isn't this number seven no listen george lucas br- yep. brought the story to this to us this way for a specific reason this is the second movie of this whole franchise indeed, indeed. yes and i'm glad you said that as well because this is the number second one the number second um <laughs> Back about Empire Strikes Back. Before The Force Awakens, this is the only Star Wars movie not directed by George Lucas. Oh, yeah. Erwin Kirchner directed this movie. So, mm-hmm. fun fact. Um, and number one, folks, you had to know I was going to go here The Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. The Dark Knight is my favorite sequel, second movie in a franchise of all time. I mean, go back to watch other videos, look at our Batman stuff. Yeah. I go on and on and gush about this movie over and over and over again. It's perfect. I love it. In my opinion, it is one of, if not the greatest sequel, number two movie of all time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and this was, and that was one that was uh, so much. We'll talk more about it, but there you go, ladies and gentlemen. There are Gary's top five sequels um, of all time that he, that he loves. And in uh, a real quick, as we, before we move into honorable mentions for anyone who may be thinking, haven't you done a sequel video before? Listen, Gary brought up a good point with this idea for this video. We had sequels we never got, sequels we never asked for. We never actually talked about greatest sequels, and that's why we're doing it today. Just remind you guys, this is our list. And Efren, this was harder than I thought it was going to be because Mm -hmm. there's really not that many great sequels. There's really not. There's so many that just fall flat. And let's be honest, before we even get to mine and these honorable mentions, Gary and I both did this thing. We're like, okay, I know Gary's going to pick this. Yep. So I need to, so, and uh, Gary knew the same of me of, he knew what I was going to pick. So we wanted to have some different, yeah. like different ones on here. We can't uh, come up and have the same five, you know? Exactly. Cause essentially we're making, we're trying to make 10, but you guys will see there's some on there that are kind of the same, but here's uh, honorable mentions from the both of us. This is mixed on here. And uh, and once you guys see, I'll just read them off, and then we'll briefly talk about T2, Terminator 2, Captain America, Winter Soldier, X-Men 2, and Father of the Bride Part 2, and you said you had another one to add. Batman Returns. Just had to mention. Batman Returns, that's right. And Batman Returns, he had to mention. So those are our honorable mentions that we wanted to get on there. Um, you know, Terminator was great. Terminator 2 is the one everyone actually remembers mm-hmm. and, like, remembers greatly and quotes and everything. So that one makes sense. You know, Captain America, Winter Soldier, that was a movie that – you know, Russo Brothers first directed, did a great job, and actually made Captain America cool. Yes. Um, so that that was definitely like, wow, like that was probably probably the like I love Civil War, but Winter Soldier is probably my favorite of the Captain America. Series. Winter Soldier is like the Marvel James Bond movie. Yeah, but it was so good. It, it was such a great sequel. X Men Two, um, you know, when the first X Men came out is when they brought back like when first X Men came out. That's when it was like, oh, we can take comic book movies seriously. And then with X Men Two, they stepped it up, and uh, they didn't have sequelitis. It was very well directed, really tight, really great acted. It was so great. And then uh, Father Bride Part Two. I have to leave that to you, sir. Cause I never actually yeah. saw that. <laughs> you know, I, I had to throw a comedy in there. There's not yeah. many great. There's very few really good comedy sequels. And mm-hmm. uh, Father Bride Part Two, Steve Martin, Martin Short, at their best, and. Yeah. Uh, Diane Keaton's and this is makes me it's a feel good movie puts me in a good mood mm-hmm. and uh, I love Fire of the Bride Part too. Yeah, there you go. I, know, I remember watching the first one with my parents because we they rented it and we watched it for some reason, yeah. but I never saw the second one because I was just like whatever. Yeah, um, I, I, I thought I'd surprise you there. I, yeah, I mean, I <laughs> very surprised. I saw that and I was like, this is a joke, right? I was like, I, all right. More, you know, it's just a nice feel good. 
stupid. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So, there you go. So, you have Gary's. You have our honorable mentions. And then, uh, yeah, we have a couple movies that may repeat. Um, so, you know, I didn't put these down in any order. Um, mainly because I was just like, I just love all these. And um, so, I will, I will actually go ahead and get the ones that we have the same out of the way. Which the first one being, and again, this isn't in order. I'm just saying what they are. Um, but, you know, Dark Knight was, I've had that one on there for me as well. Highly anticipated movie. Uh, definitely stepped things up, took it to a new level. And honestly, the best of the trilogy anyways. Yeah. Um, so that even shows you how awesome this is. Like you said, go back to our Batman videos. You see how much we talk about this. So, yes, the Dark Knight has to be in there. Um, honestly, if I'm going to put a ranking on this, I would put this at the number two of all time. And, you know, Gary obviously knows what number one is um, for me. But two all time would be The Dark Knight. Uh, it just it is just so great and fantastic. Um, and then the other one we had that uh, that was also the same is Empire Strikes Back. It is a great second sequel. Um, the fact that they did something that at the time was pretty unheard of, which I agree, did greatly appreciate, is that the good guys lose. Yeah. Um, you know, I know for those, and I know there's a lot of people who didn't like it with Infinity War that Thanos won. It's like, what the heck? Uh, Empire did it first, and and it was something that was was new and a fresh take, and uh, and really elevated to this to the elevated it, um, this franchise. And I think this is because how good this movie was. I think that's why a lot of people didn't like Return of the Jedi because it felt too, um, it felt too like okay, now the good guy won, kind of touchy feely kind of stuff, but. I enjoyed it a lot more because it just was a fun movie and it brought the story to a close. And that's what I appreciated about it. Cause you know how you guys know how I am bring stories to a close. It does no need to have all this other nonsense. So I like, that's part of the reason why I liked it so much, but you don't get return of the Jedi without empire strikes back. That's why it is one of the best sequels of all time in an amazing movie. Oh, indeed. Well said, well said. <laughs> yes. And um, and so those are the ones that we had the same. So now we're going out of the out of the realm here a little bit um, uh, for at least being together. And so my next one is Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. And for me, I, I just love this trilogy. It is fantastic. And again, bring stories to a close, right? Like I understand after this trilogy, there's you know the original Planet of the Apes. Like this, this trilogy was a prequel, but it still brought this prequel to a close. And um, but Dawn the Planet of the Apes was great. I love the first one. This one definitely elevated it. And this is like a trilogy that did get better with each installment. And um, Dawn the Planet of the Apes really showed like the humans that were left struggling, you know, to, to live, to, to bring society back. And then also these super smart apes that have created their own society. How are they going to live together? How are they going to coexist? You have, yeah, and then again, you have the same thing on both sides, right? You have humans that just want to coexist with the apes. Caesar wants to coexist with humans in the sense like just kind of let us be. But then you have apes and humans on both sides that are that ra rather kill each other. Um, you know, just a great kind of story of what happens when there isn't a whole lot left, right? And what humans and apes and whatever can do. And so, and then of course you have the very underrated, extreme... I, I can't even tell you how underrated Andy Serkis is oh, as God. an actor. Um, can, can I just get on the soapbox real quick? Listen, Andy Serkis does some amazing work, man. He's I mean, on yes, your list twice. Spoiler alert. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this man, what he does... People don't give him credit because they're like, oh, well, motion capture. First of all, we wouldn't have motion capture if it wasn't for Andy Serkis mm -hmm. perfecting it. Mm -hmm. Second of all, the fact that through motion capture, he can make you believe in an ape. That yeah. an ape is real. And then he and then he turns around and teaches other people how to do it right so these other apes can be on the same level as him. Andy Serkis, do, a trying. wonderful performance. He, the man needs to win awards, and he gets no respect. I will continue to praise that man's acting abilities and what he has done for the film industry. And it's fitting that he is such a big part of this franchise, this trilogy, because I will say that the Apes trilogy is very underrated. And if you've never mm -hmm. seen it, I was one of them. I, I kind of it went under my radar. Everyone's like, you got to watch them. And I watched them, loved them. If you've never seen that trilogy, check it out. It is mm -hmm. very good. Yes. And if you're excited for the new Batman movie, Matt Reeves directed Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and War of the Planet of the Apes. Mm -hmm. Matt Reeves directed both of those. And part of the reason why I'm excited for the Batman, because I have a lot of faith in him because of what he did with these two. But, you know, he didn't direct the first one. He directed this one. And it was fantastic. Yes. Um, 
so yes, yeah, so there's so there's that. Um, and again, just go watch it if you haven't. Um, the next one, no surprise to anyone if you followed our channel at all, Spider Man Two, the Tobey Maguire series. Um, it, it really is. It's honestly it's up there with one of the greatest trilogies of all time in a lot of people's list. Um, and but uh, but this one it did like you had the first Spider Man. It was great. It did some new amazing things directed by Sam Raimi. Um, who is was known before this more as a horror person, yeah. but you do see a lot of those horror elements in this when he with things he does with Doc Ock, especially in the hospital room, um, and just he just really pulls into the, what makes Spider Man so great, Gary. And I think a lot of people might forget this is that he, is that it is really more a Peter Parker story trying to figure out how to be a good Spider Man, mm. and him struggling with that. And this movie really deals with that really well of how much he is struggling. You know, not only to live his life, to go to college, to just to, just to be Peter Parker, but his you know, his love interest with Mary Jane, and how is that going? Yeah, I mean, there's just so much. But guess what? He has to be Spider Man. He has to save people, and this just does a great job of balancing all that. And it tugs on the heartstrings because Parker and, and Otto Octavius have this relationship, and now he goes evil. It's like crap. And then you see this whole like, I have to save him, and and so they just do a great job with the story. Some of the one of the greatest set action sequences with the whole subway scene yes. um, that is still studied today by other people. So th there's just so much this movie did that it did a great job. And this is actually a great example of you could have a great movie, a great first movie. You can have a fantastic superior second movie. And if you don't do things right, your third movie can fall off. And this is where a lot of franchises fail. And unfortunately, this franchise does the same thing. But the second one was great. And, uh, and we can just pretend the third one didn't exist, but that's okay. But if you watch No Way Home, you have to accept it, but whatever. Um, yeah. So you have Spider-Man 2. And then lastly on my list is, um, oh, I don't know where to go. Oh, here we go. It is probably my favorite trilogy of all time. But the second one, The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. Yeah. And this is where, again, Andy Serkis makes an appearance. Got him. Got him. And uh, you do get to see that character come alive more in this and this one, um, the two towers. It is. Listen, what Peter Jackson did with this franchise in general was great. And it was very, very easy for him to just get worse as this went on. Um, but he did it and he was able to take this because like, I didn't read the books. All right. So Lord of the Rings fans can be mad at me. I didn't read the books, but I watch these movies. I absolutely love these movies. To me, this is the greatest trilogy of all time that to me it is because. With each, for me, I think we talked about this before, Gary. For me to say that, it's like you have to have a great first movie, a better second movie, and an even better third movie that closes the whole story out. Um, and it's and that's why there's a lot of there's just a lot that can't do that. Um, but this one just adds on to the story, gives you more character development, gives you an awesome action sequence at the end, really dives in um, again to the story, and they just did a great job with this and everything the way it looks. It still holds up today. Oh gosh, yeah. I just rewatched it last week. Yeah, I mean, this is so. That's why for me, I love this movie. This is on there. This is one I remember. It was funny is I remember watching the first one in the theater, and then I being like, okay, that was good. I liked it, but you know, I just it was like, okay, it was a kind of fantasy. I didn't really like get into it as much. And then a friend of mine, let's go watch this. I'm like, uh, I don't know, because at the time, you know, I was like maybe 15 or something, and all I cared about was like I want to see cool action. And my friend was like, dude, there's a lot of action in this. I went and saw this and was blown away by the whole movie. And so it's like, I like the. And then when I went back and watched the first one, I appreciate the first one a lot more because of this one, which is why I, I think this is a great sequel as well. Like, if it makes you go back and appreciate the first one even more, yeah. you did your job as a sequel yeah. as well. Yeah, and, I, you know, at some point we do plan to do a deep dive into the Middle Earth universe. Uh, my brother-in-law, Michael, is the token... Um, um, Tolkien expert Master, in my life. Expert, yeah. yes, he is. He knows everything about it, and uh, we're gonna bring him on one day and just really dive into this trilogy and maybe mm -hmm. the Hobbit as well. Um, but yeah, since we're on the topic, I'll just say uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy is one of the, oh, if not the greatest achievement in film history. Um, the fact that mm -hmm. I just rewatched it, the 4Ks extended editions uh, last week, and right holds up. It's so great. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. It was so good. And it was just something that I, uh, I just can't it, like when you see something like that at that scale with the way he did it, it was very, very surprising. Yeah. So, so I couldn't believe that it happened and, and the way they did it, it was just fantastic. So those are our 
You heard Gary's top five sequels. You've heard my top five sequels. You had our mentions. We would love to hear from you guys. What your thoughts are. Do, do you agree with us? Do you disagree? Or do you have something to add? Or do you have something where you're like, hey, I think this beats that. We would love to hear why. Let us know in the comments. Did we forget something? Yes. And we're getting up there in age. We probably did. Let mm -hmm. us know. Don't be a jerk yes. about it, but let us know. Yes, let us know indeed. And then uh, before we head out of here, Gary, a surprise sequel. Mm -hmm. A very a sequel that, um, that I think needs to be mentioned because it is very, very important that we mention this. People cannot forget about one of the greatest sequels ever created, and that is the Cool Ranch Doritos, sir. Yes, he had nacho cheese. I know you're a nacho cheese guy. But Cool Ranch stepped in, made it better. A sequel for the ages on the same par as Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Doritos Cool Ranch, one of the greatest sequels of all time. I mean, we might as well start talking about Caddyshack Part 2. Um, no, sir. I mean, no, sir. I mean, it's all Dark right. Knight. It's not the original. Dark Knight. Mm. Hey, listen, Empire Strikes Back, Two Towers. That is what Cool Ranch is to chips that is it's, what cool ranch is to nacho cheese uh, boom yeah. it's, it's it's uh it's batman returns if anything not the original no nope. pretty, pretty good no no it 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 just added more i ate All, the spicy just added more. the other day and i'm still trying to recover from it oh well you ate spicy that's your problem they you should have done that <laughs> they were no need they to were, eat the spicy man holy cow they were yeah. they me up but anyway so if you guys don't understand Gary and I have a little thing going back and forth, a little, a little uh, rivalry between Nacho Cheese and Cool Ranch. Had to throw it in there for Gary on sequel day. The original is the best, and Taco Bell agrees with me. So, so the expert. Cool Ranch is back. By the is way, is it really? Yes, limited time, but it's oh, back. Oh, okay. So hmm. it's not back to stay, unfortunately. Oh, been. and they have, and now they're doing the spicy nacho. Anyways, sorry people, I know we're getting off topic, but. I haven't eaten yet today, so this is a bad direction to go. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. happy sequel day, everybody. Go watch yeah. some movies if you have a chance. Yes. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't yet so you don't miss out on any new content. We try to review new stuff, new trailers, all these different kinds of things. And, of course, great episodes like this one for yeah. sequel day. It's fun. Yes, we have a lot of fun here. Thank you guys for joining us. See you. We will catch you.